Hello, you're tuning in to the fifth edition of WCTV. I'm Lisa Mobach. And I'm Jordan Berkey. We have a great show for you, so stay tuned. We all had a spooky good Halloween. I don't know about you, but with all the excitement going on, I've kind of let my grades slip. With the state cross country meet and the end of volleyball and football seasons and the Halloween weekend, schoolwork was the last thing to do. Tell me about it. I am way nervous for my parents to see my report card at conferences on Thursday. Allison, can you fill us on conferences? All of the grade reports, a progress report for each student, and then we file them in the um, boxes for each of the students so that when the parents come, they have them in their folder. Conferences. Gosh, there's a lot of things that we discuss at conferences, uh, such as a student's behavior. Do they have any NHIs? Um, what can they do to improve their grade? We talk about uh, what their grade is, what is the coursework we're doing at the time, um, lots of different things. Parents ask all kinds of questions, and we just try to answer those the best that we can. So I didn't know that much work went into conferences. Why do we even have them? Why are they so important? Maybe Ms. Astaby knows. Conferences. Parent teacher conferences really are very important to um, for parents, students, and teachers to develop a trust, a communication network. Uh, we have a lot of good ways of communication now with email, phones, in touch, and everything too. But still, it's nice to have that personal contact uh, to a couple, at least a couple times a year. It really is very important for developing that. Um, Connection. How conferences change with semesters? Uh, tomorrow night's conferences really are going to be basically the same as they have been for the last 10, 15 years, um, but they are two weeks later than what we have had when we were on trimesters since we were um, going at the midterm. So nine weeks was last week, had progress reports, grades turned in, and the, the will be midterm grades now. Conferences are more important than I thought. Even though your parents can check up on you on InTouch, it's still important for them to come and talk with your teachers at conferences. Because now with semesters, they only have two chances to do it. So get your assignments handed in and be sure to tell your parents, I need to send it back to you in the studio because I need to get back to my work. We can all relate with how hectic classes have been lately. All of the talented musicians and actors have really been feeling the pressure with the fall musical. Nick went backstage for a sneak peek. When springtime comes around at Webster City High School, everyone is anxiously awaiting the announcement of the upcoming fall musical. Well, that decision has been made. The musical is West Side Story, and it's the story of two people who, well, let Mrs. Garvey tell you, because she knows more about it than I do. Could you give us a brief summary of the play, West Side Story? Oh, this is really an exciting play. It's probably one of the best plays we've ever put on. It's about two star-crossed lovers who um, come from different types of families in New York City. Uh, one is from the, the white society, one is from the Puerto Rican. Uh, they're not supposed to fall in love just like Romeo and Juliet, and they do. And a lot of problems ensue. Uh, there's violence involved. It, it's just a really, really good story with not a so happy ending. But come, come and see it. It's just really a good story. How long has the cast been practicing, and how have practices gone? We had a, auditions in the middle of September, and so we've been practicing for five to six weeks. A uh, lot of hard work going into this. We've, there's a lot of difficult dance numbers, so a lot of choreography they've had to learn. The music is very, very difficult in this particular play, so a lot of work. They've been working very, very hard with uh, Jessica Nillis playing piano and uh, Mrs. Rowe Billiard um, teaching them the songs. Uh, they've been acting with me. We've been working on that for a long time. The practices have gone really well. The kids have really um, dug in and done a lot of hard work. And I think you'll be able to tell on opening night, I think we're going to be ready and I think it's going to be really good. What would you like the viewers to know about the play? You need to know where to go and when. It's November 4th, 5th, and 6th. That's a Friday and Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. It's all at the Premsa High Auditorium. 
$5 tickets at the door. We're thinking we, we hope to be sold out for all three performances. We want to pack you in there. These kids have really, really, really worked hard, and, and we want you to come and enjoy yourself. Uh, so please come out. I told you Mrs. Garvey knew more about it than I did. The story is really brought to life by the characters, two of which are Zach Brandt and Nadia Williams. As lead role, tell us a little about your part. Well, I play Tony, a young man who tries to break the bonds of society, prejudices, and stereotyping, and I meet the love of my life, Maria, and we try to break the bonds together. Can you tell us a little bit about your part? Um, I play Maria, and um, I'm the sister to Bernardo. And then we go to the stands, and um, I fall in love with Tony. And then um, Tony, like, we can't be together and stuff. And then we sing, and we fall in love some more. And then he dies, and then I'm sad, and that's my part. What do you do in order to memorize all your lines? Well, to memorize my lines, I um, I sit by myself and I try to pretend like I'm two people and then I read the other person's line and then try to think of what my line is. And if I get it right, then it's memorized. Approximately how many people are in the play and how many will actually appear on stage? Well, on stage we'll have about 50 people dancing and acting out parts and there's about 20 people working on backdrops, uh, lighting, and sound. Well, we hope to see everyone at the play this weekend. It's Friday and Saturday night at 7.30 and Sunday at 2. Mrs. Garvey and the cast of West Side Story have spent countless hours preparing for the musical. Besides, what else do you have to do now that the fall sports season is over? Oh, and by the way, if you don't make it to the play, you'd probably be expecting a call from Officer Krupke. Break a leg, guys. The musical is this weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I will expect to see you all there. Not only have the musical participants been busy, all the athletes have been wrapping up their seasons. Carissa? We're getting leaks from several Nassau officials, some rushing home to be with their families, that the drilling was unsuccessful. Okay, so it's not Armageddon. But the fall sports seasons are definitely ending. So what have the teams been up to? Here's a couple football captains for the lowdown on the football season. We didn't have a very good record but uh, we had a lot of heart. Um, we had a lot of younger guys that stepped up a lot and the seniors want to thank them for that. Um, we came into the season knowing that our schedule wasn't uh, the best one in the state. It's probably one of the toughest in the state. We played the number one and number two teams this year. Um, Despite our record, I think uh, we're a really good team. We uh, showed some great leadership and had some great plays and had some younger guys step up. Uh, I think the program's going in the right direction. Uh, it's just definitely a rebuilding year this year. Now that the football season is almost over, the football team deserves a thank you for your hard work and effort. The cross country team is also coming to the end of their line. Here's Kelsey Tompkins and Chris Wardell for their thoughts on their cross country seasons. The girls team had a really good season this year. We got first of the Lynx invite and we had a couple of really good meets, but we fell um, to second place at conference. This was really hard after running it the last two years. And districts, we got fourth and you need top three to um, go to state. So only eight points out of that. But I'm really excited to go as an individual and hope to place top 30 at least. Um, the goal for the season, uh, trying to get all the team together, run good. Um, we just had a couple of meets where we had the actual full team get together. Um, we did really good at a conference, uh, got first there. Districts, we got shy of getting first place uh, to, against Charles City. Now we're going to state and we're going to do our best to take Charles City on and we're going to get up in the top three and hopefully get up on the balcony. Good job cross country teams for an awesome season. Finally, another volleyball season is over. Um, at the beginning of the season we started off strong like we played awesome against our few, first few games, but later on the season we had our struggles, we had our ups and downs, and but we're coming on strong now. One of our goals for the season was to talk a lot and make sure that we know if the ball is going cross court or line, and we haven't been doing so well, but the last couple of games we were talking a lot, so which was really good. 
We've improved throughout the season immensely. Um, we've met most of our goals, and we really appreciate the school support throughout the season. It's the best ever. Here's a final congratulations to all the teams for all their hard work and dedication. But don't get too down about the season ending. The winter sports season is just around the bend. I'm Carissa Kennedy, reporting for WCTV. Our athletes don't get enough credit for how they represent our school. Good season, everyone, with all the fact fall activities coming to an end. Hopefully all your schedules will mellow out. Remember to stay cool and have fun. Adios. Adios.